Good evening and welcome to NA Unity Day. My name is Chad Eikoff and I serve as Director of Admissions here at Northern Arizona University. I absolutely love NA Unity Day. It's a day that we've been doing for several years now and really celebrating the diversity and inclusion that we have on campus um, and, and the welcoming community that we offer here. Um, I'm joined on stage with my colleague, Becca. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Becca Arvalado. I am a coordinator for Native American and Diversity Recruitment with University Admissions at NAU. I get to serve students in Alaska as well as Northeastern Arizona, primarily Hopi, uh, Navajo, and White Mountain Apache nations. Now, I've been a staff member here for going on three years, but prior to being a staff member, I was a student. I graduated along with the class of 2017 with my degree in psychological sciences and a minor in ethnic studies. Now, before we dive into the presentation, we'd first like to start with a land acknowledgement. For um, Northern Arizona University sits at the base of the San Francisco peaks on homelet sacred to Native Americans throughout the region. We honor their past, present, and future generations who have lived here for a millennia and will forever call this place home. Now, it's important as an institution that we take a moment to recognize and respect indigenous peoples as the original inhabitants and stewards of this land. Great. So we're going to get going with our formal presentation here, where we're going to first uh, kind of give you a broad overview. Beck and I are going to give you an overview to let you know more about NAU. Uh, we're going to hear from some of our different campus partners as well. And we're also going to have a student panel opportunity. So for the student panel, if you have questions, uh, be emailing those into admissions at nau.edu. Um, and we're going to be looking at those throughout the program. And then at the end, when we have our student panel, uh, we will be bringing those students uh, out for that. So again, admissions at nau. Edu to check that out. I know that kind of one of the big elephants in the room or one of the things on the forefront of people's minds is COVID-19. And we aren't going to focus exclusively on this because I know we're talking primarily to prospective students uh, coming fall 21, uh, maybe beyond that even. And hopefully things have returned to some sort of normalcy by then. Uh, but we do know that many students, many families do want to know what we as an institution have done to respond to COVID-19. So a uh, very robust response, uh, many different things in place. Our students that are living on campus, we are requiring uh, those students to be tested prior to when they moved onto campus uh, this fall. We had surge testing available in our field house on campus that served our campus community, as well as the greater Flagstaff community. Uh, we've got lots of different uh, things in place in terms of safety in the classroom, in terms of the number of students in there, and utilizing our NAU Flex technology, students can join uh, from outside the classroom as well too. So they can join in uh, remotely to those classes. Uh, dining and housing uh, have taken many steps to be safe as well. So I wanted to address that up front. And many of the photos you're going to see and videos that you're going to see as a part of our presentation were shot prior to the pandemic. So you might not see as many mask wearing and that type of thing, but if you were to set foot on campus today, uh, definitely our students walking around campus would be wearing uh, masks, people would be social distancing, uh, but a lot of the images you're gonna see in our presentation will show you uh, what normal life uh, was like on campus and uh, hopefully uh, we can be back to that um, in short order. So, one part of being a part of a community, and NA Unity Day is focused on that community aspect and, and fitting in uh, within the NAU community, but also the broader Flagstaff community. And Flagstaff certainly is a college town, and many rankings rank it as one of the best college towns in the country. And I, I absolutely love the weather we have here in Flagstaff. I'm a Minnesota native, uh, so I, I'm used to those long gray winters. Here we do actually get all four seasons, which People outside of uh, Arizona and myself coming from Minnesota didn't realize uh, that Arizona got winter, but we're at 7,000 feet elevation. So we do get all four seasons uh, here in Flagstaff, the world's first international dark sky city. So we have ordinances around light pollution and the stargazing here is absolutely amazing. The Huffington Post named us the best city in the world for stargazing. Looking broader beyond just Flagstaff, Northern Arizona has lots to explore, many national parks and monuments. It's a short drive 
from campus. And I always encourage our students to get out and explore all those opportunities. The Flagstaff Urban Trail System has been absolutely great during these uh, times of social distancing. Uh, I've certainly appreciated uh, those after work at night when I get home. Um, I will go out and, and explore one of the many uh, Flagstaff Urban Trails. We also, outdoor recreation, uh, everything from uh, skiing uh, to mountain biking, hiking, camping, backpacking, all of those things people like to get out to explore. Beautiful Sedona is just a short drive uh, from campus, maybe half hour, 45 minute drive down through Oak Creek Canyon. And we, as NAU, really like to get out and explore and take advantage of all that's around us for our classroom experiences, but also our recreational experiences too. We've got a short video here to show some of our students utilizing a space down in Sedona uh, to do a little bit of yoga. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Enjoy these quiet moments. We're out here in the middle of Sedona doing a yoga practice. Deep breath. Exhale, stretch out. Wow. It's honestly spectacular. <laughs> Set your gaze at a single point out in front of you. It makes you really think about how big the world actually is around you. Fortunately, just about every point is beautiful, so pick one. I think it's important that a university provides opportunities like this. Find their place here in the rock. It helps students like really connect with themselves and also with their um, academic life. Get tuned back in with yourself. It kind of brings that balance into their lives. Take in the view around you. I feel like a better person. Like I definitely feel more confident. Both arms up, warrior one. So I am very happy that NAU has this program. I wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been through NAU. Set your foundation. It not only helped me realize, you know, the strength that I found in myself, but I can also bring that to others. It almost feels as if we could fly. The yoga really can help you throughout your lifetime. Hopefully we can take what we've learned here and put it into the classroom and then take it out of the classroom and put it into the world. So zooming in to the NAU campus, our campus is about a mile and a half long and about a half a mile wide. So it takes about 25 to 30 minutes to trek from south to north campus, and the entire time you have a beautiful view of the sacred peaks. Um, now you can see from our screen that we have about 22,000 total undergraduate students here at the NAU campus with about 5,000 of the incoming students each year being first year students. Now we have a good split of in-state and out-of-state students. We have about 60% as Arizona residents and the rest of the 40% make up um, communities from across the nation. Now our campus is really diverse. We, have an emer we are an emerging Hispanic serving institution. We are an institution who is leading serving veteran students and our undergraduate population is comprised of about 46% of students who identify as first generation. That means that they are the trailblazers of their community who are going out and getting a four year degree for the first time and making their family proud. Now, to learn a little bit more about diversity and inclusion on campus, please take a look at this video. Welcome to NAU. My name is Ivy Banks. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I have the pleasure of serving as your Assistant Vice President of Student Affairs and also the Director for the Office of Inclusion, Multicultural, and LGBTQIA Plus Student Services, or IMQ for short. Diversity and inclusion is woven into the fabric of our lumberjack life. From your perspectives, to your heritages, to your identities, we value what you bring to the Lumberjack experience and what you'll bring to our inclusive campus community. From celebrations during Heritage Month, to sharing food in the largest multicultural center in the state, to celebrating your identity through our student organizations, you'll find that you belong here at NAU and we value your identity. Student organizations are a vibrant part of our inclusive campus community. We have over 660 student organizations and over 100 of them are based upon identity. From our Black Student Union to PRISM, to our Rainbow Coalition, to our Latinx Student Union, Hermanus United for Change, and even all of the cultural organizations under Fraternity and Sorority Life through our United Greek Council. No matter what, you'll find your fit at NAU. We have also incorporated diversity and inclusion into our curriculum. Challenge yourself by taking courses from queer and gender studies, applied indigenous studies, and ethnic studies. Challenge yourself in and out of the classroom. 
Did I mention that we have the largest multicultural center among the state schools? Join us in IMQ, which is located in the University Union Fieldhouse. You can join us daily for free popcorn, kick back and watch a movie, or bring lunch in between classes. Here's a way to engage with friends, learn about the great things that's happening in our campus around diversity and inclusion. The most important aspect of diversity and inclusion at NAU is you. We look forward to engaging with you, to celebrating with you, and weaving your unique voice into the campus inclusion here at NAU. Thank you, Dr. Ivy Banks. Uh, lots of great information there uh, that she shared with us um, about campus. Uh, now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the campus kind of living, dining experience, how to get around on campus. Uh, I know those are important questions that people have. And first of all, the housing piece. I think a really important part of being a part of the, the NAU community coming in as a first year student is choosing to live on campus. Uh, we do not require our first year students to live on campus, but about 90% of our first year students in a typical year uh, do choose to live on campus. With that, we are having students live within what we call a residential college model. And what that is, is based on their academic area of interest that they're studying in, uh, they're gonna have uh, different halls to choose from uh, for that. So they're gonna be living with other students that are studying uh, similar things to them. It really gives you that built-in study group piece uh, there in your residence hall. To live on campus, it's gonna be kind of a two-part process. You're gonna have to complete your housing application and then also do what we call priority enrollment. And with priority enrollment, you're gonna be giving your academic advisor an idea of what you want to study. And that's gonna then determine which of the residential colleges uh, you have the opportunity to choose between. In regards to dining, and food is huge. I, I absolutely love food. Uh, lots of options uh, for our students to choose from here, from your kind of more traditional all you care to eat uh, dining hall facilities to more retail facilities, restaurant options for our students to choose from. When students are choosing a meal plan, they're gonna choose between either 10 meals a week, 14 meals a week, or 19 meals a week for those meal plans. And they're gonna come with a varying number of dining dollars, depending upon which of those they choose. Those dining dollars are gonna be essentially a declining uh, debit balance uh, that they can utilize. And they could go to, maybe if they just want a coffee quick, they would maybe use their dining dollars to do that. Uh, whereas those meals they would use, either in those all you care to eat facilities or any of the retail facilities across campus using what we call a transfer special. So with the transfer special, and to use Subway as an example, it's a, an easy example. You could go there, you could get a drink, a sandwich, and a side, and that would count as one of your meal swipes. So either one of your 10, 14, or 19 meals a week, depending upon which meal plan uh, you had chosen. And one of my favorite things that I know just a moment ago you saw it on the screen is our Starship robots. So it's a, a cooler on wheels, although a, a cool, saying a cooler is not giving them enough credit. They're, they're pretty cool. They drive around campus and deliver food uh, to our students. So you can actually order food. You can drop a pin right where you want it delivered and they'll make the food. Uh, our staff will load them up and then it'll drive and deliver it outside your residence hall or wherever you choose uh, to have that dropped off. And certainly in the times of COVID and social distancing, this is an option that many students utilize and lots of our robot friends uh, roaming around campus uh, right now. And speaking of getting around campus, transportation uh, is something a lot of students ask about. How do I get around campus uh, once I get there? You definitely do not need a car. A car is kind of a more of a luxury than a need, I would say. If you do have a car, you need to get a parking permit and that's gonna be zone specific. Uh, so essentially, maybe near your residence hall, you'll be parked there. It's not like you're gonna drive to, to and from class every day. You'll simply utilize your car if you leave campus. As far as getting around campus, when you're on campus, we do have our campus bus line. Every few minutes, a bus is gonna be coming by and you can hop on that and we've got a, a bus doing a loop in each direction of campus that you can hop on. We also have our Flagstaff Mountain Line, which is the city bus, and you can utilize that uh, to get to downtown, get to shopping, get to entertainment, uh, to and from campus. But we are a very pedestrian-friendly campus, very bicycle-friendly campus, 
And with the bicycle piece, we do have our yellow bike program, which is a program where you can rent a bike for free for a couple of weeks um, at a time and, and utilize that to get around campus. It's important to us that you feel safe and secure. Now to start, this year we launched our NAU Safe app. This app allows you to share your location with your friends. It also allows you to request a safety escort to navigate campus with somebody else. And then we also have our emergency alert notifications. For our emergency alert notifications, these can let you know if anything's happening on campus that you should be aware of, including a power outage or maybe just a closed road. Now, aside from our alerts, um, we do have a Jack's Card Hall entrance. This Jack's Card Hall entrance, or utilized with your NAU ID, will allow you to have a digital key to your hall on campus. So, for example, if you live in Seacrest, one of our larger halls in Central Campus, um, you will have digital key card access to your hall. But if you would like to go over and visit your friends, maybe in Wilson Hall, you'll need your friends to let you into, you into the building. Same thing for them when they're visiting you. And so that way you have that added layer of security. Now, we do have blue light phone systems that are integrated across our campus and our fully accredited on-campus police department mans those phones um, so that you feel safe as you're walking to and from. Now, as you are making this your home away from home, not only do we want you to feel safe, but we want to make sure that you feel like you're able to build a community on campus. Now, in terms of our NAU traditions, they help you build that community. For our NAU traditions, the first one that you will get to participate in is the NAU letters. The NAU letters is held before fall classes begin on the South Fields, where usually we have our soccer or our rugby matches. For the freshman letters, we create um, huge block letters for NAU, and we invite all of our first year class out to the South Fields to fill in those letters, and we take a bird's eye photo, which is later printed into a postcard, which you can circle yourself and you can mail it to your family and friends. Now, the second tradition that you can take part in is the running of the freshmen. The running of the freshmen is a really fun tradition. That was my favorite one to participate in as a student. It happens during the first home football game. And in the first home football game, it's important to note that we have our Sky Dome on South Campus as well. And that's usually where our basketball as well as our football games are held. Now, before the start of the first football game of the season, we clear out the Sky Dome floor and all of our first year students run across the field in order to ring in the new football season. Now, finally, we also have our homecoming carnival. Our homecoming carnival happens during homecoming weekend in which we clear out a section of campus and we put on a full scale carnival for you, complete with rides, games, and of course, a college student's favorite, free food. Now, aside for our NAU traditions, we also have clubs and activities that we encourage you to get involved with. We have over 400 clubs and organizations on campus, and these range from everything from academic-based to faith-based. We have culturally-based organizations as well as sports-based clubs. But if you do get to campus and you look through our list of 400 clubs and organizations and one doesn't really stand out to you, all you need is four other friends besides yourself and a staff or faculty member like myself or Chad, and you can create your own community on campus. Now, aside from our sports-based clubs, our intramurals, and our student body government, we also have fraternity and sorority life. We have brought the Divine Nine to campus, which are historically African-American fraternities and sororities. As of today, we have two sororities on campus and one fraternity. And with creating new fraternities, sororities, clubs, and organizations, as you are getting involved, you are not only building your community, but you're also building your leadership skills and you're able to put those skills on your resume. So we do have athletics here at NAU. We are NCAA Division I for athletics. We compete in the Big Sky Conference with the exception of swimming and diving, which competes in the Western Athletic Conference, the WAC. Uh, traditionally very strong in those distance endurance type sports. Our cross country team uh, recently won three straight national titles 
and our swimming and diving team, I think they're at seven straight titles, maybe even eight. I'm starting to, starting to lose count here uh, in the Western uh, Athletic Conference. As a student with your JAX card student ID, you do get in free to athletic events. So you just show your ID and you can get into a football game, basketball game, volleyball game, and go cheer on your fellow lumberjacks. Now our students do a great, our student athletes do a great job not only getting it done on the field, on the court, in the pool, uh, but also in the classroom and in their communities as well. And I wanna give you the opportunity to hear from one of our student athletes, uh, Abby Stomp. Let's take a look. I've always wanted to play Division One volleyball, so I tried to work really hard and balance going to school and getting an education, but I also have weights at 6 a.m., practice every day, leave for tournaments. Trying to make sure you get all your work done on the road can be a struggle. I feel like I will look back on my career and be really proud of everything I did, the person I've become, and how much I've grown in different parts of my life. Learning about yourself and learning from other people, that makes it worth it. I will be pursuing my master's in secondary education to teach high school science. My name is Abby Stomp, and I'm a lumberjack. Now that you've had the opportunity uh, to learn about fun things to get involved with on campus, we'd like to switch gears to our academic excellence. Now, within our academics, you'll see on our slide a number of statistics that we are most proud of, including our average class size. We are very effortfully working to keep our classroom small so that you have the opportunity to have more individualized opportunities to learn and a personalized education. Now, Chad will talk a little bit about our locations across the state of Arizona, as well as our online learning opportunities. But to focus on our academic colleges, we do have nine overall, with eight catering to undergraduate studies. We have nearly 100 majors for you to choose from. And when you apply to NAU, we will ask that you declare a major on your application. Now, what's an academic college? I get that question a lot from the students that I work with. An academic college is a community that's within the, it's a smaller community for you within the larger community of NAU. Now, as I mentioned, when you apply, we will ask you to declare a major on campus. And when you declare that major, you'll fall into one of the academic colleges. Some of our most popular programs are psychological sciences, biomedical sciences, nursing, mechanical engineering. Um, so from the list of academic colleges, you'll note that say that you decide to uh, declare applied indigenous studies or psychological sciences as your major, you'll belong within the College of Social and Behavioral Studies. Say that you are more focused on learning about biomedical sciences, you want to become a doctor in the future, you'll be within the College of the Environment, Forestry and Natural Sciences. Say that you're more interested in hotel and restaurant management, you'll belong to the community within the W.A. Frankie College of Business. So you can see how our, academics, our academic colleges are structured. Now for other campuses, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Chad. Great, so as Becca mentioned, we do have some other sites for students beyond the Flagstaff campus. And our statewide sites, nearly every uh, community college within the state of Arizona, we have a partnership with. And through our two NAU program, a student uh, can start at a community college and take some of those initial uh, liberal studies uh, courses and then transition to an NAU program either at one of those statewide sites at the community colleges or transition to the Flagstaff campus after that. So this can be a great option uh, for some students that want to stay closer to home, maybe save some cost on college to pursue a degree at one of our statewide sites. Uh, maybe you're a transfer student uh, tuning in now too and you have some college credit already, starting at one of our statewide sites throughout the state of Arizona uh, could be a great option for you. Those two NAU programs I mentioned, uh, they're throughout the state of Arizona, but also expanding into some Southern California sites uh, as well for students. In addition to our statewide opportunities, NAU does offer online programs uh, that students can partake in. And this last spring when the pandemic hit and we had a transition to online as an institution, we were well prepared. NAU has been doing online education uh, for a very long time. Uh, so we, we were well, well equipped to do so. 
Uh, many programs um, are available to students online. So if that's an option for you uh, and something you're looking for, uh, that is something that we have available. Now that you've had the opportunity to learn about NAU's campuses, communities, and academic programs, we'd like to speak to how we support you as the whole student. Now, to start with our tutoring and mentoring opportunities, our academic success centers are located on both North and South Campus for your convenience, offering free tutoring for all students. We also have our Lumberjack Mathematics Center, which supports all students who are completing a foundation level math class. Now, for our mentoring side, we compare you with a mentor based off of what you're studying and where you're from, and that would be our peer jacks. You have the opportunity to learn from one of your peers on how to be successful in your transition from high school to college and how to make sure that you are finding your home away from home. Now, we also have our Office of Indigenous Student Success. They provide an added layer of support for students who identify as Native American, Alaskan Native, and Native Hawaiian in making sure that you are connected with resources that you'll need to be successful. Now, as for our career development side, we have Handshake, which is an online resource. This will not only connect you with jobs as a student on campus, but it will also connect you with opportunities for a career when you're getting ready to graduate. We also have career advising and workshops, which will help you get started on your resumes, your cover letters, and help you hone in on those interview skills. Now, we will meet with you in a workshop setting, but if you prefer that our career development professionals work with you one-on-one, -on -one, that way you get individualized attention, we can absolutely make those appointments for you and you can learn how to land your dream job. Now, to learn how our faculty are supporting students in the classroom, let's go ahead and switch gears to this video. My favorite class is the Visual Design Lab because it gives the students a better perspective of the workplace. The number one thing that the NAU film program can do for a film student is to provide them hands-on experience right away and they can develop their own personal projects based on their vision. They need encouragement. They need to know that they can do these things, but they also need, I think, a great deal of challenge that they need to be pushed to try things that are hard and to really have to give it their best effort. There are opportunities for students to work with professors specifically with their research. There are other opportunities for students to work with community members in town. And I think it's, it's a great opportunity for students to get outside of the classroom and really speak and work with the community. Students come to me for career advice and any work experience that they need to have to graduate with better knowledge of the field. I think the mentoring really happens in the classroom. All students are expected to participate, so there's not one voice that's not heard. They might drag their feet initially, but then I think they get excited when they realize their learning ability and their ability to achieve things, and so it's pretty cool. Thank you, faculty, uh, for that video. Uh, we at NAU Unity Day are focusing on the community piece here at NAU, but also I think one of the NAU experiences I always encourage students to take advantage of is studying abroad. It's a regret of mine that I did not take advantage of a study abroad opportunity uh, while I was in college. Uh, NAU is awesome at study abroad. Lots of opportunities, lots of countries to explore, cities to explore. Uh, Heading out to every continent uh, to do that and certainly something I would encourage our students uh, to take advantage of. Our interdisciplinary global program, IGP, what that is, it's a five-year uh, program where you end up with two degrees and spend one of the years abroad. So with that, uh, it, for instance, a, a business degree or a STEM degree paired with a language, and again, one of those years abroad. So maybe you're gonna be a business major and a Spanish major, and spend a year abroad in Spain, immersing yourself in the culture and in the language. NAU ranks seventh in the nation in terms of uh, number of students that are participating in a year-long study abroad initiative. And part of that is the IGP program, uh, but NAU is very plugged in in the global community. Uh, and we also have a lot of students coming 
from the global community uh, to join us here on campus for their studies as well. We also have our national student exchange. So if going abroad to another country is maybe a, a little intimidating to you or more than you want, uh, you have the opportunity to go to one of the partner institutions that we have uh, throughout the country and you could spend a semester there. Maybe you want to explore it and see if it's a city you want to live in after you graduate or perhaps a, a spot you want to go to graduate school uh, upon uh, graduation uh, from NAU. So that national student exchange uh, is an option for you to explore. So how do you become a part of the NAU community and a lumberjack? Based off of our 16 core classes, we have admissions criteria for first year students. Within those 16 core courses, you'll see that we do require four years of English and math. We also require three years of a lab science. An example of a lab science would be your biology course, your chemistry, or your anatomy. For our two years of a social science, we do ask that one year is either US or American history. And then we ask that you take the same second language for your two years of a second language. Now, as a note within our one year required for fine art or CTE or career and technical education credit, if you take one semester of a fine art and one semester of a CTE, we can combine those two to create your full year for you. Now within these 16 core classes, we create our own GPA for you. It's called an unweighted core GPA. So the GPA that we evaluate you on is going to look a little different than the GPA that's on your transcript. Now, if you have that a 3.0 unweighted core GPA and no missing classes, you will be considered for admission to NAU. If you have a 2.5 unweighted core GPA and up to two missing classes or what we call deficiencies, we will still consider you for admission. However, please note that those deficiencies or missing classes cannot be within the same subject area, nor can they overlap in math and science. Now you'll note that we are a test score optional university, which means that you are not required to send in your ACT or SAT um, uh, standardized test results. However, if you do, we will absolutely take them. They can only benefit you. Those scores will never hurt you. Yep. And I'd say if you haven't applied yet, nau.edu slash apply yeah. is where you could go. Um, and you'd be self-reporting uh, those 16 core courses and we will automatically consider you for scholarships as well too, which we're gonna be mm -hmm. talking about in a moment here. And that's going to be that unweighted core GPA again is going to come into play there uh, with the scholarships. Here at NAU, we are committed to predictability of cost and trying to keep things as affordable as possible. Uh, we do have three different tuition rates here at NAU, our Arizona resident rate, our WUI rate, Western Undergraduate Exchange, which I'll talk more about in just a moment here, and then our non-resident uh, tuition rate. We also have some additional costs that a student can uh, expect to pay in a typical year. So that's kind of your uh, standard fees, housing, meal plan, books and supplies. There's an estimate there. Uh, $1,000 uh, is maybe higher than what most students uh, spend for books and supplies, but that's one of those costs we wanna get students and families thinking about uh, to make sure they're planful for that. I mentioned that WUI, Western Undergraduate Exchange, and here's a look at those states. The states colored yellow on this map here are part of that Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. And any student coming from those states is going to be paying one and a half times the resident tuition, which is a significant discount from the traditional true non-resident uh, tuition rate. When a lot of schools are wooey schools, and it's a buzzword that you'll hear if you go to a college fair, um, you know, we're a wooey school, we're a wooey school kind of thing. Uh, but make sure you're asking questions about how they award it. NAU awards WUI as broadly as anybody. Uh, we will, and if you're coming from that state, you're gonna automatically qualify for that Western Undergraduate Exchange uh, program. There's no additional application. You don't have to be a certain degree program to get it. You will qualify. Now, as Chad mentioned, when you apply to NAU, we will automatically consider you for our tuition merit-based scholarships. The first scholarship listed here is our Lumberjack Scholars Award, and you must have Arizona residency in order to be considered for this scholarship. Now, based off of those 16 core classes that you'll self-report on your application, we ask for three pieces of criteria. 
The first piece is that you're not missing any classes or you don't have any deficiencies within the 16 core. We also look to see that you have no letter grade lower than a B. And then within your 16 core classes, we calculate a 3.5 unweighted core GPA for you to meet that um, minimum core GPA required. Now the Lumberjack Scholars Award awards 100% of tuition. So it is an incredible scholarship to be offered as an Arizona resident. Now for other scholarships that we have for students from across the United States, you'll see that we have three columns on our slide. For our Arizona residents, you're going to be looking at the first column. For our Western Undergraduate Exchange or WUI, you're going to be looking at the middle column. And then for our students who are non-residents, you'll be looking at the final column. Now, you'll see across the board for President's Gold and President's Excellence, you'll require, or we will require a 3.5 unweighted core GPA. Now for the second row, we will require a 3.0 to a 3.49 for the Dean's Blue and President's Non-Resident Award. And then lastly, for our Opportunity Scholarship, we require a 2.9 to a 2.99. All of these scholarships, again, are automatically um, applied to your account if you qualify upon applying to NAU, and they're renewable for up to four years, as long as you continue to meet the renewal criteria. So it's a great opportunity to be automatically considered for them. Now, if you speak to any admissions representative, we will always talk about the FAFSA. That is an added layer of financial aid support that we can offer. The FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and this application opens up on October 1st. Now, if you're looking at different universities, you'll note that NAU has one of the earliest priority dates for the FAFSA, which is November 15th. What a priority date means is if you apply to NAU, and you submit your FAFSA with NAU school code, which is listed on the slide, we will be able to package you for financial aid and send out that financial aid award letter in early spring. This really gives you the opportunity to look over different scholarships, grants, and loans that you are offered to be able to afford that cost of attendance to the university. Now, if you've already applied and been admitted, so going to nau.edu slash apply, and you've had that admissions decision sent to you, we wanna quickly touch on some of the next steps that you're gonna to want to be completing after that. So NAU admitting you, is that, that's NAU saying yes to you. Your way of saying yes to us that you plan to attend is by paying your enrollment deposit. So you'll go online to do that at nau.edu slash accept my offer. And then when the housing application opens, you're able to submit that application there. Complete priority enrollment, which I touched on earlier, uh, is tied to the housing piece. That's where you're going to confirm what you want to study so that your advisor uh, is able to build you a schedule off of that. And then registering for orientation when we open that up. Typically that's a in-person thing over the summer. This last summer we did have to uh, adjust and, and pivot to a virtual orientation experience, uh, but we will certainly have an orientation experience of some kind, be it virtual or in-person uh, for you next summer. All of these can be spelled out at nau.edu slash next steps is where you're gonna see a complete list of all those things that you need to uh, complete to become a lumberjack. And we, we hope many of you uh, choose to become a lumberjack and we'd love to see you here on campus. Uh, next up, we're going to have an opportunity to hear from our first gen programs, first generation programs. And that's an identity uh, that I identify with. I, I'm a first generation college student. Uh, neither of my parents have four year college degrees. So certainly something near and dear uh, to my heart. And I love the fact that NAU is so focused on serving our first generation college students. So uh, let's uh, hear from them.
everyone. My name is Caitlin Opsher. I'm the Assistant Director in the Office of First Generation Programs. Hi, my name is Katherine Lawler. I'm the Program Coordinator in the Office of First Generation Programs. At NAU, a first, generation program, a first generation college student is someone whose parents or guardians have not earned a four-year bachelor's degree. In the United States, 33% of students identify as the first in their family to attend college. 47% of incoming first-year students at NAU identify as first generation. That's nearly 11,000 students across the state attending all NAU campuses. During the NAU admissions process, you will be asked a question to determine whether or not you are a first generation student. If you answer no to if either of your parents or guardians graduated from a four year college or university, you would be considered first generation. At NAU, we know our first generation students are trailblazers. In the Office of First Generation Programs, we provide scholarship programs, services, and support for students that are forging new paths for themselves and their families. The first program a first generation college student can join when coming to NAU is our successful transition academic readiness, better known as the STAR program. STAR is a five week summer bridge program. A student would attend STAR the summer before their very first fall at NAU. During STAR, a student takes two classes totaling six credit hours. They get to know other new students, participate in peer mentoring and learn about NAU and live on campus and connect to STAR program staff through fun activities. Eligibility for the STAR program includes being an Arizona resident, attending NAU the upcoming fall semester, being a first generation college student who demonstrates financial need, and being a Pell Grant el eligible student. A four year commitment for scholars engages students from freshman through senior year in academic and social programming, while also supporting students financially with a $2,000 tuition scholarship. Students that join for scholars have program benefits that include mentoring from staff and successful peers in the program, academic success workshops, tutoring in partnership with the academic success centers, freshman transition course called NAU 100, service learning opportunities, and a connection to campus and community resources. Eligibility for the first scholars program include being a first generation student meaning neither your parents or guardians have a post-secondary degree, including an associate's or a bachelor's degree, being a first-time freshman admitted to NAU, having an academic need, demonstrating financial need, and completing the free application for federal student aid each year, being a U.S. citizen, and being eligible for in-state tuition. Our last scholarship program is Student Support Services. Student Support Services, known as SSS, serves first generation income eligible and students with disabilities to ensure their success in college. The program offers ser services and resources in a positive, engaging environment to help students navigate college, build their sense of belonging, and confidence and strengthen their self-efficacy. Program benefits include academic mentoring, exposure to cultural events and academic programs, financial literacy education, graduate school and career preparation, personal counseling and tutoring services, and students with unmet financial need receive up to a $500 grant each semester during their freshman and sophomore years. Eligibility for SSS includes um, required documentation that's provided to the U.S. Department of Education and implemented in the TRIO regulations that state two-thirds of the students must served must be from low-income backgrounds. To find out more about this program, visit nau.edu forward slash first gen forward slash SSS.
Now I'm gonna be talking to you about the First Generation Pathways Program, which is available to all students across our NAU statewide campuses. First Generation Pathways is offered through the Suitable app. Suitable is a technology-based platform, which is offered through a phone app as well as a website. The benefits for students are to create a record of experiences for your resume, get connected with your first generation community, and attend events and complete activities of your choice to be eligible to win rewards. You'll see that students will be able to complete milestones, which we've listed on the screen, including Explorer, Storyteller, and Trailblazer. Next, we have the Tri Alpha Honor Society, which will be launching this semester in the fall 2020. Tri Alpha chapter promotes academic excellence and leadership development for first generation college students. All first generation college students, graduate students, faculty, staff, and alumni of NAU are eligible to join Tri Alpha Honor Society. We also have our first generation workshop series, which we offer 10 sessions each semester and that will be on Tuesdays this semester in the future we'll announce when that will be available you'll see that these workshops are are available to offer students skills and experiences that they can learn about through the NAU community and beyond your undergraduate experience please contact us either through our phone number which you'll see listed as 928-523-6980 you can email us at firstgen at nau.edu. Please follow us on Instagram or Facebook at NAU First Gen. After the break, you'll hear from the Office of Inclusion. We are the Office of Inclusion, Multicultural, and LGBTQIA Student Services. I am Q for short. My name is Marion Griffin. I am the Assistant Director for LGBTQIA Student Services. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Daniels. I currently serve as an Assistant Director as well, uh, with an emphasis on Black and African American student success. Hi, my name is Vidal Mendoza, and I am the Assistant Director of Hispanic and Latinx Initiatives. So I want to tell you all a little bit about the Office of Inclusion. So the Office of Inclusion Multicultural and LGBTQI Services welcomes students to our inclusive community where we support cultural, gender, and sexual diversity through programming and communal engagement. Our office consists of two student centers, the IMQ Center as well as the Q Unity Center. We are located in, on the Flagstaff campus in the University Union Fieldhouse on the first floor. We offer a wide variety of services to any student no matter how they identify. This includes a student gathering space, access to services, including but not limited to the University Writing Commons, academic advising, free or reduced cost health screenings, support for diverse and inclusive student clubs and organizations, as well as access to professional staff who are passionate about supporting you on your journey to achieve your goals. So, come on in. Do you all wanna know a great secret? Something that we offer that no other place on campus offers is a peer mentor program that focuses on diversity and inclusion. Um, so basically with this program, it serves students who self-identify as part of a underrepresented group. So with this particular peer mentor program, they have access to inclusive programming and events such as our diversity dialogues and our ice cream socials. In addition, they have access to some of our trainings such as Safe Zone, Transparency Zone, and the one good unique thing 
about this particular program is that our mentors also get trained on these things so that we know how to serve and service our students. As Jessica mentioned, the Office of Inclusion also facilitates a variety of trainings um, covering various topics pertaining to inclusion, diversity, and allyship for our diverse campus community. This includes Inclusion Zone 101 and 102, Safe Zone 101 and 102, Transparency Zone 101, Dream Zone 101, as well as an unconscious bias training. To learn more, please check out our website at nau.edu slash inclusion. IMQ hosts numerous events celebrating one's identity, ethnicity, or sexual orientation, such as Black History Month, Asian Pacific Islander, Trans Awareness, Pride, Hispanic and Latinx Heritage Months. In addition, we provide a safe space for dialogue amongst diverse students, professional staff, or faculty. Along with community forums, tackling our most up-to-date issues and events on and off our NAU campus. Through our program, we hope to enrich both educational and personal growth while strengthening our NAU community. Please follow us at, on social media at NAU Inclusion. You can also reach us directly by phone at 928-523-5656 or send us an email at inclusion at nau.edu. As Chad mentioned at the start of our admissions presentation, we welcome your questions surrounding the student experience. Should you have any questions for us, we'd love for you to send them in. You can send them to admissions at nau.edu. As we are preparing to receive your questions, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Gesh and Nai to tell you a little bit about themselves and introduce themselves. My name is Gustavo, but you can call me Gus. I am from Nogales, Arizona, which is the border town here in Arizona. I am a junior now studying English secondary education, so I'm hoping to become a teacher in at least the next two years, and I go by pronouns he, him. I'm Nai, and I'm an ID scholar at NAU. I'm a senior and an anthropology major, and I hope to go into law school, even though I'm an anthropology major, um, and I go by the she, her, hers pronouns. Awesome, thank you Gus and Nai. Um, so to start with our questions, we received a really good one and it is, why did you choose NAU? Yeah, so I chose NAU because, uh, well, I have a pretty fun story when it comes to that, but um, when I was in eighth grade, my family and I started coming to Flagstaff for New Year's every single year and um, I decided to tell my parents that after college, I was actually going to move up here because I fell in love with the atmosphere, I fell in love with the people, with the community, and uh, once senior year rolled by, I did exactly that. Um, this was the first college that I actually applied to, and um, once I did get accepted to NAU, it was all amazing after that. I loved um, actually being able to see the campus um, because I hadn't seen it for um, those past years since I would come to Flagstaff and um, I fell in love with the NAU community as well. Well, I wasn't planning on going to NAU when I first got here. Um, honestly, I was expected to go somewhere else, but then I got my acceptance letter and my mom wanted me to come out here and see the university. So her and I came up here, we made a full trip out of it, and we kind of just fell in love with the atmosphere, and the people are really, really nice out here, and I'm not sure why that's a big deal to me, probably because I moved around a lot, and people were just really mean sometimes. <laughs> um, but that was a big thing, and they had the programs that I was honestly interested in, so I just automatically enrolled here, and I've never regretted my decision. Awesome, thank you both. 
Um, so can each of you tell us a little bit more about your involvement on campus? Yeah, so I am actually um, working for NAU admissions right now. This is my job. And uh, I got this job by using NAU ha or Handshake um, by NAU. And it was um, very easy. I was able to see all the jobs that NAU had and I actually applied starting in July. And um, since I came to orientation, I fell in love with uh, how the people who had this job would interact with other individuals who were coming to NAU. And ever since then, I applied and never looked back. I have been here for three years and it has been uh, the best thing that I have been on on campus. Uh, but I do know that there are other opportunities um, where there are other clubs and organizations where you can go to the Office of Inclusion uh, and the Office of the Dean of Students where um, you can actually get a list of those clubs and organizations that pertain to you. It can be uh, focused more on your ethnicity or background or it can be uh, regarding your hobbies or anything like that. So I have looked into it, but uh, this job does take a lot of my time and I really enjoy it and the people within this job. So um, I have just stuck with it ever since. This is going to be a long answer, so bear with me. Uh, <laughs> the first thing that I automatically got involved with when I started at NAU um, was Peer Jacks, which is the first year program here for out-of-state students. I was a mentor there for two years and I enjoyed every bit of it. We worked on a lot of activities to encourage students to go through their syllabus, practice going through their planner, and then a lot of events where you go off campus and kind of just see and go around in Arizona, like the Grand Canyon or the Arizona Zoo. And then this is my third year as a mentor, but I'm an ID scholar now, which means that I work with the Office of INQ, Office of Diversity and Inclusion. And we host a lot of events that encourage students to do like Greek life where you're surrounded by people of your ethnic background, um, LGBTQIA events, et cetera, et cetera. They do a lot of cool stuff. And then I'm also a part of Omega Phi Alpha, which is a service sorority where we work on a lot of on-campus, off-campus events to encourage um, organizing and coming up with projects where we're actually giving service to the Flagstaff community. And then I'm also a community organizer, which I'm working with the civic engagement minor, where we do a lot of work with organizing events with voter registration, immigration rights, and a lot of stuff. Wow, both of your experiences are so great. Um, so we received a question that I think a lot of students have questions about. Um, what is it like adjusting to the altitude and the snow? Can you each tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I actually have a really funny story when it comes to um, adjusting to the snow. I had never um, been within the snowfall until I actually moved up here. And uh, the first time that I did experience snow, I decided to go to Canes. And I actually put on some Converse instead of my snow boots. And I was slipping all over the place. It was not a good idea at all. Um, after that, I did decide to um, purchase some new snow boots so that I am ready to actually walk to Canes without slipping. Uh, but other than that, um, I thought it was beautiful just going outside, uh, seeing what people describe as a white Christmas. Um, we don't get too much snow in Nogales. Uh, usually it's either rain or just the sun. And so it was fantastic to see. And uh, it was awesome to see all the individuals who were out there uh, throwing snowballs at each other, um, making uh, snow angels, everything you see on movies usually. Um, and Honestly, it made me want to get a cup of coffee because anytime that I see snow in a movie, they always have a cup of coffee with them, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, so it was definitely one of the best experiences I have ever had. So I didn't really need to adjust to the snow because I lived in the UK for a little while, which did get a lot of snow when I was living there. So when I came up here, and I actually came up here from San Diego, so I automatically knew that I needed to bring winter boots and my 
really long jacket. I'm not saying get a short jacket, get a long jacket that's thick because <laughs> that way your legs don't get cold either. Um, I actually had to learn to enjoy the snow versus getting used to it because in the UK, I hated the snow because I'm not a cold person, but it was fun watching my friends go into the snow and like fall and they disappear. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's fun watching the snow fall, especially if you've never seen it before. But just make sure to get boots and a jacket. That's all I'm going to say. Yes, great advice. I'll second that. Um, so NA Unity's purpose um, is to celebrate diversity and inclusion on campus. A really great question that we got is surrounding that diversity. Um, how would each of you uh, describe diversity on NAU's campus? Yeah, so I am from a predominantly Hispanic community. So I did grow up just with other Hispanic individuals speaking Spanish in my household, English at school, but also Spanish with my friends. And so once I actually moved up to Flagstaff, I got to meet a lot of different individuals where um, they would actually either speak different languages or they were from different back backgrounds in general. Um, usually those students, um, are from all types of areas. I've met people from New York. I've met foreign exchange students who I still have in classes who are absolutely wonderful. I love learning about their culture and everything within that culture. And um, they just, they're so happy to be here that uh, you can tell how enthusiastic they are with everything they're saying in class, everything they're trying to show us about their culture, things like that. And um, I also like um, showing some of the individuals up here my culture. I like going back to my hometown, getting some Mexican candies, and I bring those up and share those with my coworkers, or if we see some uh, other friends uh, that are not in my job, I usually just you know, slip in a little candy for them. Um, it's usually extremely nice when I, he when I hear them say, oh, this is really good. And then when I hear them say, um, I'm not really into the spiciness, I, I'm like, okay, well, that, that's all right. As long as you tried it, I'm fine with it. Um, and that's exactly what I live my day by. As long as I try it, um, then I'm okay with it. Everything from different backgrounds um, that I can try, I'm willing to do it for sure. So I came from a more international background. I was used to being around a lot of people from different cultures, but not around a lot of people who were from the black community. And when I came to NAU, I 100% thought that I wasn't gonna run into another black person until my senior year. That did not happen. Um, actually, it was random because I was walking to class and one of the girls from an organization on campus called Ladies of Truth, which is a group where a lot of black women, they get together, they talk about like, working on hairstyles to give each other tips of just being a black woman in Flagstaff. And one of them approached me and told me to come to one of their club meetings. And I did. And I came across so many other black women and they were just talking about all these things that I 100% understood. And I was like, yes, I've been saying that forever, but no one gets it. Um, I didn't join the club because from the previous question, I do do a lot on campus, so I wasn't able to go to all their projects and stuff. But every time I went to an event, I always saw girls from that club and they always noticed me and they remembered me and it made me feel so good because I had people that I already felt comfortable around. Not only that, but like the Black Student Union and also like organizing, I came across so many other people who just accepted me and they were from just different backgrounds. And it was just great because I didn't have a problem coming out or like just being who I am. Thank you both for sharing. Um, so at the NAU campus, we have folks that represent communities from across the United States, as well as internationally. Um, you both touched a little bit on this before, but we would like to know, what was it like to transition from your hometown to campus life? Yeah, so um, it was a, a bit difficult. I am very family oriented, so um, I still try to call my parents every single day um, my brother once a week, um, and I just like checking up on them. But it was very difficult transitioning up here, uh, which is actually five and a half hours away from uh, Nogales. Um, it's not an easy drive to do if I ever just want to go one day and then come back the next day. 
Uh, so I usually just check up on them, but um, it has been very difficult, especially since I have other family members in Nogales that I uh, enjoy seeing and enjoy talking to. Um, that has been the main difficulty being up here. Um, but luckily, you are in a campus where uh, you feel like home, and that's exactly how I've been feeling ever since I came to campus. Um, and ever since my parents came up here to visit me, they have said the exact same thing. They like where I am. Um, they understand when I can't make it home for certain events because they know that I'm enjoying the college life up here. I'm also very family oriented. Honestly, I'm always talking to my dad, my mom, my sister, my grandma, my grandma, my grandpa, my uncle, all of them, because uh, we love each other. Um, but with adjusting, I definitely was homesick. At first, I kept denying it because when I was at my dorm, I was like, no, I'm independent. I'm, a, I'm out here by myself. I'm great. I'm fine. I don't need my parents right now uh, until I started breaking down crying. I was like, oh, my gosh, I really do miss my family. Um, but over the years, it got to the point where I would just call them, let them know that I love them, that they've supported me through so many things. But not to, like, get over it, but kind of just keep in mind that even though I'm not at home, it's okay that I'm at school far away because I'm practicing being on my own. And there's nothing wrong with that because eventually you're going to have to do it. But that doesn't mean that I don't have to see my family. So it's just keeping up with that balance. Yeah, that balance is definitely really important. Um, so part of being on the NAU campus is not only being a member of the NAU community, but being a member of the Greater Flagstaff community. Um, can you two share a little bit about how you take advantage of living in Northern Arizona um, and what is there to do off of campus? Yeah, so I really love that question. Um, I have always been a big fan of just eating and eating and eating. Uh, so I love uh, being able to experience all the different food places that we have off campus. We have a lot of places downtown that I had never tried because they are local areas. But then I've also tried other areas um, off campus that are actually chains in Arizona that I didn't know were chains. For example, Culver's and uh, Freddy's and um, Red Lobster. They're really good. And um, I can't believe I hadn't tried it until now. Um, but that is definitely my main thing to do off campus. I like getting uh, in a group of friends or uh, just with one friend um, and going to downtown, just experiencing downtown in general. It's a fantastic atmosphere. And then finding all the different places that they have for food. So with my experience, I've definitely gone downtown with my friends a lot. It's always fun, but when I was truly embracing the Flagstaff community as well as the residents was like the first time I got involved with community organizing because my classes kind of forced me to go off campus um, and I went with one of our local community organizers who took me to the sustainability convention that the Flagstaff was hosting because if you come out, out here we are surrounded by forests you best believe we care about the environment um, and we went to this convention that was encouraging like taking care of the environment and I actually went there to the register people to vote, but that was when I was truly being in involved with the community. And I was talking to all these older people who were amazing, who were telling me their stories. One guy was telling me how he owned like a wolf, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> but that was like my first time getting involved. But since then, I always kept going to like movies off campus or doing events off campus. I do like to eat candy a lot because I go to the candy shops a lot because the candy apples are great. Um, or like the local bookstore because not Barnes and Noble, I'm not saying Barnes and Noble, it's the local bookstore. I promise you it's better. Um, but those are like a few things I like doing. Awesome. And then we have one more question for you that we've received quite a bit. And I think it just really gets to the heart of uh, students who are wanting to prepare for um, college life, but they're not really sure how to get started. Um, what's one piece of advice you would give an incoming student that you wish you would have known as a first year student or as a freshman? Yeah, so um, I would just say try it all. Uh, there's so many opportunities on campus and off campus. 
um, and it's just good to try them all. I have tried rock climbing. I don't look like the rock climbing type though, if you can see. Um, I've tried other things such as snowboarding, um, which I am going to try skiing at some point, but uh, snowboarding for right now was already on my list. Um, I have tried hiking, things like that. There's a lot of opportunities, and especially on campus, we have so many events on campus that go on. Um, my favorite event that has been on campus for years has been the Homecoming Carnival. And every year that that's around, I am just so happy to be a part of it. Um, I change it up uh, with the friend group that I go with. That way I can have some fun with different people as well. Uh, but I absolutely love the carnival. Home homecoming season is just the best type of season. So there's just so many opportunities and I would say take advantage of them. Um, there's one opportunity right around the corner, every corner you look. What I'd say is let yourself grow and develop as a person and a student. Um, I remember when I came to college, I truly thought that I had everything figured out and that I knew everything. I promised you, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> when you come on campus, do all those things that Gus said. Also, like letting your embrace yourself in these classes, learn more about yourself. This is the moment to really understand who you are and how you could better yourself for going into the workforce or going into the world and changing the world. So that's all I got to say. Wow. Thank you both so much for taking the time to answer some questions about the student experience. And thank you to everyone who sent some questions in. Um, we'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Tracy Harvey from Inclusive Excellence so she can end our day. Thank you all. Welcome back. I'm Tracy Harvey, the Director of Inclusive Excellence here at Northern Arizona University. I'm so happy you decided to attend our event tonight to learn a little bit about NAU. I hope you will walk away with a clear understanding of the services, resources, and opportunities that are available to you. NAU has a long standing commitment to diversity and inclusion through programs like Student Support Services, the STAR program, our ID Scholars Program, as well as the Office of First Generation Programs and our Office of Inclusion. I want you to know that we are here for you. We are here to help guide you along the way, to provide opportunities for you to connect and engage, and to help create a sense of place and community for you once you arrive on campus. As you begin your college journey, I encourage you to take advantage of all the resources and opportunities you heard about tonight. Reach out, ask questions, submit that application, and put yourself out there. Please know that you belong here. There is a large community of staff, faculty, and fellow students who are eager to meet you and welcome you to NAU. Thank you for being here tonight. I look forward to seeing you on campus in the future. Please stay tuned for a short video on why NAU from current NAU students. Um, I chose NAU because it was close, or it is close to the reservation, and I wanted to learn more about like my Navajo heritage and how that like plays into who I am and who I want to be. I chose NAU originally for the outdoor recreation and four seasons that Flagstaff has to offer. Mm -hmm. Um, and now that I've been here, um, I really do appreciate the opportunity that Flagstaff and NEU has given me. I 
decided to choose NEU mainly because of the scholarships and the grants I was being given and also because we have all four seasons here which is something we can't experience back home. Yes, 100% I was nervous. I was going to a state I've never been before and I didn't know what to expect but at the same time I was excited. You know, it's okay to be nervous. Being nervous means that something important is going to happen.